the Lord. We pray that our hearts will connect with yours. The great hymn that our writer wrote, we pray that the heart of our hearts will be your heart as well. Be our vision, O oh God, as we move forward in life and in ministry. Bless us this morning, and we pray that the meditations and the sermons of our hearts will be pleasing and acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. I imagine you're like me that you love listening to stories. Stories about the lives of people. I imagine you're like me, you like to hear and love to hear the stories that tell you so much about the life of a storyteller. I like to listen to stories because I it widens my horizon and understanding of that person as well as gives depth to the relationship. Life stories tell me so much about the storyteller, who often can be a person that I do not know well or at all. I love to even hear those stories from those that I do know well. I love to hear the stories of elders who reveal so much about their place history and their place in his story, capital H-I-S, capital S-T-O-R-Y. I love to hear about the choices that elders made in their lives, the circumstances of their lives. I love to hear how God helped script their own personal story. Sometimes I listen to the same story more than once. The story becomes familiar and I remember the parts and the outcome. Sometimes I listen to a story told by one person about another person. And whether I hear the story ten times or if I hear the story second hand, I will tell you there is always a God message in that story. The God message is for me, hearing the voice of God through the voice of another. Listening for the God message of others is what I love so much about listening to the stories of the lives of people. And sometimes we discover together that God message. Sometimes it's very obvious that we've heard the voice of God through one another. But it is such a great joy to reflect and to ask questions. Could that be God speaking? To us right now, or God speaking to you in that time and place. The other day I was listening to a story that I had heard before. I didn't mind, it didn't matter at all that I had heard this story. I wanted to hear the story again, and I will tell you the truth, I would love to hear that same story again and again. Because next time I hear the same story over again, I, I listen more carefully, not so much with the ears of my head, but the ears of my heart. You know the difference, don't you? Yeah. Listening with the heart yeah. is very different than listening with the ears of the head. Yes, of course, the words come through our ability to hear, but we let those words settle into our heart and see what emotions or the way that the story starts to move us in a certain direction. I wanted to listen and think about why this story was so important to the storyteller. Because the storyteller had told me the story once before. I was listening with my heart. I wanted to also share what my heart heard. I wanted to tell back to the storyteller, this is what I hear and this is what I hear. Maybe God is saying to us or was doing through you at that particular time. I thought that would be important in the share, as well as the continuance of telling the story. I wanted to have that story told to me over and over again so that I could understand clearly what came to be for me an awakening to what let's call landmarks on the map of a person's life. 
In other words, as I heard that story and it was told to me once again and again, I started to hear parts of the story that were truly more significant than other parts. And they established landmarks along that person's life that, that meant that that particular moment in time was significant in the development or the growth of that elder's life. It was a story that I was listening to that defined the meaning and purpose for the storyteller at that particular time and place. It was a formational story that I was listening to. It was a story that served as the first layer of building blocks of a storyteller's young adult life. I could hear God speaking through the story. Words about what in that particular time was right in life. I could hear God speaking through that particular story. Again, I heard words that told the difference between what was right and what was wrong. The message that had passed me by the first time I heard the story. Yes, friends, we all have these stories that make our relationships so worth the while. Every single one of us has a story to tell. A story that reveals to another person not only who we are, but how God has worked through our lives. Listening to one another's stories gives body and strength to the body of a relationship. If you're not listening to the stories or to what's being told to you by another person, if you're drifting off and, and going in other places when another person is talking to you, you're starting to dissemble a relationship, not build a relationship. Listening to what others have to say to us in stories, yes, it can be challenging sometimes. Sometimes we do have to sort through the, the substance of a story, but the most important thing is, is that we give credence to the story, to the gift of listening. Listening to the story of another makes one spirit connect to another spirit. And it's the spirit-to-spirit -spirit connection that, for me, and I hope for you, reveals God's presence and God's will. I'm talking about stories from the heart, not stories of gossip and not stories for the sake of pacing time. I'm talking about stories that, that open our hearts to one another. Stories that open the hearts of the teller. Stories that open the hearts of the listener. The story of the young King Solomon is a story of the heart. Solomon opens his heart to God and God opens God's heart to Solomon. Solomon opens his heart to God, telling God what God already knows about Solomon. His inability to lead as a young king. Solomon has no problem and he needs to give voice to his shortcomings as a young king. And Solomon knows well that, that God knows him so well inside and out. And Solomon knows that God is a faithful God. And Solomon's experience yeah. through God and through the life of his father, King David, has told Solomon how faithful God is. King David and Solomon were together for so many years, and, and Solomon could see how much that his father trusted in the Lord. But now he finds himself, King Solomon finds himself unfolding his own relationship with God. And Solomon is laying down a landmark on the map of his own life, seeking the right building blocks for his kingship. The reading that was shared with us this morning from Kenny tells us that, that Solomon traveled to a high holy place to offer many, many, many sacrifices. This was the time before the first temple was constructed in Jerusalem. And so people would travel from place to place, high holy places to offer sacrifices, to do what they believed would be pleasing unto the Lord. And this morning we hear that Solomon is there offering many sacrifices, traveling to this high place, and he, he was going to be patient, he was going to stay at that high place until God spoke to him. God speaks to Solomon through a dream. 
saying, ask what you wish, and I'll give it to you. Boy, we all could have that dream. If God would speak to us and say, ask what you wish, and I'll give it to you. If you've had that dream, if you've had that wish, Solomon recounts God's faithfulness and confesses his inexperience as a servant of the Lord and God's people. And Solomon, as he hears this offer from God, asks for what he will need to be faithful to God and to God's people. And what does Solomon ask for but a discerning mind and the ability to distinguish good from evil? That's all that Solomon asks for. He could have asked for many, many things, but he goes to the heart of what God wants Solomon to ask for. Unknowing, unknowingly, Solomon makes that heart-to-heart -heart connection with God, and God is so pleased by Solomon's request, and grants him a wise and understanding mind, and even grants him what he did not ask for, which was wealth and fame. I remember as a child wishing for the opportunity to go to a toy store and to have a half an hour of time in that toy store where nobody else would be there. And I would be given this huge shopping cart. And my wish was to be able to go into that store for those 30 minutes with my empty shopping cart and to fill that cart with all the toys to my heart's desire. I imagine filling the car with the toys that I did not have and the toys that I would see in the flyers and the newspaper that I had always longed for. I would just pile those toys on until they fell outside of the car. It was a childish wish and one that was completely ignorant of the world around me. But it was appropriate for a child that I would want that wish for some time. My heart's desire would change as I matured, but still I would want that one wish, and still I would find myself wanting a selfish wish. I wanted to fill my heart with my heart's desires. Later in life, I would learn what was most important to God, and what would be most important for me to understand was the desire of God's heart. How would it be that I would fill desire of God's heart. And so I would need to listen to God's stories that would reveal to me the heart of God so that I could make the connection between God's heart and my own because my heart was leaning in a certain direction. I needed to hear the stories from others who would open my heart to their connection to God that would also be a bridge for me to God. I believe we all experience this maturity, this growth in faith, where we come to our own decisions about what we're going to wish for in terms of filling our own lives. I heard a story the other day. It was a story about a young person who made one poor decision after another. It's a God story. The last few choices that she made cost her her freedom. And now time has come for this young person to be accountable and to receive what will be determined to be a just punishment. But first she must deal with an opportunity that has been given to her. First she will be given this one opportunity to reveal her heart to those that she offended in her. One opportunity to open her heart. The choice will be hers, and only hers, to stand before those that she offended and to speak from the true place of her heart. It will be one choice that can either build up her life for the good or put her on a path away from what is right. This is a foundational opportunity. It's going to be part of her story as she matures in life. One way or another, it's going to be 
part of her story. And I was so glad to hear that this young person took the opportunity, a bold and courageous opportunity for a young person to connect her heart to the heart of God and to the hearts of those that she offended. The storyteller, not the young person, the storyteller told me how this young person had come to understand that the Word of God wanted her to make the connection between God's Word and her life. In other words, it would be the Word of God that would guide her in this opportunity to make a decision to discern with a listening heart to do what was right which will be hard when the time comes. <clears throat> the outcome will be one of truth. When she arrives at that moment and lets her heart speak in response to God's word to those that she offended and hurt, it will be a moment of truth. And it will be a moment of reconciliation. It will be what is right and what is acceptable to God and God's people. It will not be easy, and it will not be an eraser that will just wipe everything away and say, okay, everything is forgiven, all is good. No, there still will be consequences for this young person. But out of this one choice will come a new life. And out of this choice will come the building blocks of a life that will have a story to be told. And I just pray that these building blocks, this story that will be told, will be the, tour, the story that turns your life around, and that her heart is truly discerning, that her heart is truly listening to the Word of God, that God is saying to her, yes, you can turn your life around, you can do it by reconciling, by being truthful, by apologizing, by seeking forgiveness, and it's moving forward. Hey, what is due to society, but also acknowledging that you are a child of God and that you can move forward in your life. And that's a story that has been told to many, 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 many countless people over over 2,000 years, a story that begins with a new beginning. Solomon asked God for a gift that would make him the best servant to God he could be and the best king to his people. Solomon asked God for the gift of wisdom, a, a listening heart, a heart that connects to God and to God's people, a heart that reflects God's will in God's way. Isn't that what we want to for ourselves and for our church? To be able to reflect God's will in a way, to be discerning hearts individually, and to be discerning hearts and listening hearts collectively, <coughs> to be able to pay attention and to be able to go from that point of understanding to action, to be able to make decision that we are going to, and we talked about this yesterday in a church council meeting, we're going to listen to God and we're going to be willing to take holy risks. Not sure where God's leading us, but trusting in God's word and our discernment through our hearts and minds that allow us to move forward in faith that God who is so faithful. And this is the one wish I have for our young people that are heading off to college. I've got one. I would love to talk about my daughter, Paloma, who's getting married on Friday, but I'll get too emotional. Just pray for us as Friday rolls around. The one wish that I have for young people right now, and it's a prayer, it's not just a wish, that they will have a discerning heart a listening heart. I pray for those young people that are heading off to college or into military service or to a job or into uncertainty in a young life that has not many choices. I pray, whatever the circumstances are, I pray that they will have a listening heart. It's very different than listening ears. The young person I told you about who's got a heart decision to make and the circumstances and consequences to, to pay for is listening with her head, not her heart, when she got into that situation. 
I pray that these young people will, will have a listening heart so that they'll be able to, to hear God speak to them in their own way, but they'll also be able to make that, that human connection, that one spirit connection to others, that they'll be able to hear the stories of others, especially the stories of elders who can give us so much wisdom in life that have been there and done that and, and can say, you know, that may not have worked well for me, it may work for you, or it didn't work for me, and I bet it won't work for you, to be able to take the stories and to hear God speaking to the voice of others, especially our elders. I wish for them a listening heart so they can hear God help guide them on choices and bless them with an understanding of what is right and what is wrong, and, and to do what's pleasing in the sight of God, just like King Solomon, to be frank and open and, and, and to be able to admit that you don't have all the answers or even maybe not even, even the questions that, that you're vulnerable before the Lord and others that say, Lord, I need guidance and help. I pray that our young people making life decisions and new choices and new steps in life will have a discerning and listening heart. And I have this one wish for you as well. Let your hearts continue to grow, to discern, to listen to one another and to God as well. I wish that we all grow together in relationship with and become this, this, this common discerning and listening heart that we, we experience the joy and the love that comes with that and that we find within one another God and, and the stories of God our lives and be inspired by that, by the Holy Spirit that speaks to us in this way, that we, we move together in new directions, I pray that we'll be listening to God and one another over and over again, never ever being bored with one another's stories. Listening to the stories of life and listening for God moments in another's life is such a gift. And I wish that we would all hold fast to these words as we think about what it means to discern with a listening heart. God made it clear to Solomon his joy over Solomon's wish. That Solomon didn't look for the red convertible or the condo on Miami Beach or the, the jewels and the wealth but that Solomon went for discernment, for a holy connection, so that Solomon could do God's work first. And that's my prayer, that, that all of us will, will be those that are willing to first seek ye the kingdom of God. First, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. <clears throat> You know that song, don't you? It's found on page 405. Why don't you turn to it with me? Let us just sing it through a couple times, prayerfully, as we think about what does it mean to have a listening heart, a discerning heart. You're going to have to go out through these doors in a few minutes. You're going to be challenged in some way. You're going to have to make a decision. You're going to have to listen for God's advice. So as you go as a disciple of Christ, commissioned to build up the kingdom of God here on earth, my prayer for you and for myself and for us together is that we first seek the kingdom of God, trusting and being faithful, knowing that God will be trusting and faithful with us and will provide everything else that we can need. Let's sing together.